is uh, great to see everyone. Good morning and welcome to our uh, uh, devotional, Merry Devotional this morning. Um, I just wanted to start and first of all, thank Tony and Melanie for just uh, shepherding the church here in Ottawa during, I mean, we all know this is just a, just a crazy time and uh, just taking time every day to focus us help us uh, kind of get the right perspective. I know Joyce and I are, are feeling the same towards our quote unquote children in, in Pittsburgh and just trying to trying to shepherd them. And, you know, it's been interesting because in, in some ways we've been in more contact with each other than we were normally, yeah. which is kind of a both a convicting thing and yet a, an inspiring thing. So I'm glad we can do this, but I did want to thank uh, Tony and Melanie for uh, just their hearts for you guys and for us and just their desire to shepherd. So we've uh, entitled this little devotional, or as, as I've talked to Tony a little bit, this, this may continue for who knows how long. So we'll uh, kind of morph and adapt. Um, today may be more of a teaching time and a focus time, but uh, I'm open to some more interactive uh you know group counseling <laughs> <laughs> you know help with one another and being practical we'll, we'll make some practicals today but uh just to make it really meet meet our needs so i think it'll be fun we've entitled this a chord of three strands taken from uh ecclesiastes chapter four and we if you know anything about a rope a rope is uh, made up of strands that is woven together and obviously provides its strength. And, uh, you know, that's what we are in, in marriage. In the context, it is two are better than one in Ecclesiastes chapter four. And, and certainly in our marriage, I know I am a better man. I'm a, a better husband, a better person as a result of uh, the, the support and strength that Joyce has, uh, has given me over the years. Actually, we have been together since we were 16, <laughs> that's a lot of life. <laughs> we actually will be celebrating our 38th anniversary this uh, coming uh, this coming August. So there's been a lot of life together and uh, she has supported me and provided the strength. But, you know, as I think about a, a, a cord of rope, I think about the fact that it can get, get frayed at times. And I, I think of what we are all going through right now is, is fraying. It's, it's a challenge. Um, you know, we are feeling the effects of a new reality. Um, isolation at home, you know, we're getting more and more restrictive. We're even hearing more guidelines coming down from governments and cities. And uh, so it, it's getting more and more restrictive. Our jobs, uh, our families, uh, like I said, I, I woke up the other day and uh, I just couldn't sleep. I, I, was, I was thinking about, will I ever get back to Pittsburgh? What about my parents? They're in their 80s. You know, there's talk of 10 to 20 percent mortality in that age group. Gee, I don't want to I don't want to be a carrier to them. What happens if and so I just couldn't again, my immigration is stalled. What what will happen? And so there's a lot that frays our lives at this point. And I think Tony and Melanie talk about that all the time. And but one of the things is we are we're together more, but we can also be somewhat isolated and disconnected. We're in the same home, maybe even in the same rooms, but through anxiety and worry and all the things and distractions of the, of the world and the current crisis, we, we can actually become more and more distant. You know, the sad reality, some of the figures that are now coming out or the discussion has been that there are more... Uh, people filing for divorce in China right now, kind of following their curve as things are kind of decreasing, more and more people 
are filing for divorce. And crisis and challenge kind of phrase our relationship. And so that's why we've entitled this kind of a cord of three strands, because we want to, we all need our marriages to stay strong in these times. And uh, again, Joyce and I over the years have been through our, our storms and our challenges and our difficulties. And uh, there are times where she strengthens me and supports me, times where I support her and strengthen her. And uh, we need that in one another. You know, there's a, there's a great book. It's one of the, my favorite books on marriage uh, called Sacred Marriage by Gary Thomas. And uh, one of the realities that he shares, he talks about perhaps marriage is not all about happiness per se, but about holiness and being what God wants us to be. And he uses this idea of a mirror that our, our spouses can be a full length mirror to us, showing us our, our faults and our sins and our, our, our difficulties. <laughs> and I kind of laugh right now because it's one thing for me to look into a mirror to see how I look like and kind of get ready and go off for the day. It's a, it's a whole other thing now to, to have a mirror with me 24 <laughs> seven. It's kind of a freaky thought, Hey, you know? Uh, so, but that's, that's kind of what's happening in our, in our marriages now, you know, we are together. Um, Boy, we might be seeing stuff, you know, more in, in a more reality. Uh, hey, why did you not clean the dishes? Why did you not do this? Why did you say something this way? And so that that mirror is, is with us all of the time. And I realized during times of, of kind of stress, we're all feeling, we're all feeling frayed. And, uh, you know, honestly, I think it is a great opportunity now to spend some time. Uh, I know some of you uh, will be working throughout the day, working from home, but we, many of us have some opportunities, uh, more time on our hands. And I think it is a good time to make sure that we are focusing in the right areas, obviously on God, in our marriage and with our families and not, uh, not neglecting that. And, and so, uh, you know, Joyce and I just want to, as, as we're making our way through this, just share some thoughts and inspire us to, to, to be what uh, God wants us to be strengthening the cords in our marriage. Joyce is going to share a few thoughts here. Um, yeah, I was thinking with giving it the title, um, you know, the, the, strands of three the three chords um we can't help but realize that god is god is the first strand um that <clears throat> unites us together and when sean's talking about the chords that get frayed we get to eliminate god <laughs> because he never frays True. you know he's constant um he's reliable he's faithful and you know it, it's it's up to us to realize that our cord is fraying and um you know and to take our goal is is initially for us to take a look personally at ourselves but god has given us each other to help do that sometimes we don't see ourselves and we do need you know the the mirror in our life that god's given us um <clears throat> so i think it's great to um excuse me <clears throat> um you know try and look at ourselves and uh, I, I saw this psalm last week, um, and it was just, it was such a beautiful psalm, but it's very penetrating, and I'd super encourage, you know, us as individuals and then as couples to look at it, but it's Psalm 24, verse 3 and 4, and it, it's a psalm of David, and he says, who is allowed to ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may go up to his holy dwelling place? I mean, think of that, you know, approaching the throne of God. And he, David says, the one whose deeds are blameless and whose motives are pure, who does not lie or make promises with no intention of keeping them. And it's just such a beautiful psalm that, 
and convicting that we can look at ourselves and, and really go, okay, if I want to approach God at the end of the day, um, and especially in a time like this, there is an expectation because God is so holy that my heart, you know, my soul needs to have this desire for pure motivation, um, that my motives are, are genuinely pure and that I don't make promises I can't keep. And I think in our marriages, that this can um, be revealed, especially at a time like this. So it's a wonderful opportunity to strengthen our cord and, you know, our personal cord that as we bind it, you know, as a cord of three strands, um, that God, you know, ties us tightly, tightly together. But we do take um, time to just look at ourselves first. You want to say a prayer? Sure. Father God, thank you so much just for this opportunity in the midst of, um, you know, this pandemic going on. Um, thousands and millions of people are really um, in their own homes and you know, your spirit, your word, um, your presence is among us in a way that we've never considered before. And the technology, the technology that we have right now just to enter each other's home, uh, Father, and, and more so, God, to approach your um, holy dwelling place, God. We offer uh, our personal cord to you, God, that you can, um, you know, bind us together and strengthen our cords of our marriage, uh, that you would be ultimately glorified in all of this. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles with you, you can turn to uh, Colossians chapter three. We'll spend uh, some time here. Like I said, uh, I'd like for us to kind of adapt as we go along in these devotionals. And uh, today is really some foundational teaching um, and some just reminders. I mean, Paul, Peter would say, I want to remind you of these things. And uh, again, you just can't during this time, you can't get away from just the how much everything kind of bombards us and even weighs at us what uh, what is going on. And, and uh, Paul reminds the church in Colossae and he reminds us, first of all, uh, since then you have been raised with Christ, verse one, set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above not on earthly things. And, you know, I think Paul wants to make sure that we, we set our hearts both individually and uh, together as couples where they need to be. And that is on things above, setting our minds there. And like I said, this is, this is difficult to do right now because there's a lot of reasons why we're focused on, on the present. There's a lot of reasons why we're, we're, we're consumed with, with what is going on in the world. And it's hard to focus on things above. But Paul assumes that uh, as Christians, we, first of all, have been raised with Christ. And he'll go on to say in verse 12, as God's chosen people. Now, I want, I want, to, I want us to think for a second what that could and should mean for us. I mean, being raised with Christ, resurrection, our, all, our former way of life is now gone. It is, it, is, it is behind us. And we can, in fact, in Romans 8, experience resurrection in our lives, in our mortal lives, he goes on to say. And so God wants us to experience a, a resurrected life, but he wants us to, to kind of live from the fact that we are chosen. And that's, I love that idea. That, that we are special to God. And our, in, in our marriages, we are special to God. And we have a special opportunity to display the glory of God. I need a reminder of who I am and, and what God has done in my life. And I just try... I try every morning not to just turn on, you know, open my computer and see the news or, or, or have a news feed. I, I'm, I'm trying at this point to, to make sure that my mind and my heart are set 
on things above. And just taking some time in God's word and, and making sure, what, what's the song we sing? I woke up in the morning, where was your mind? Saying that it was Jesus. You know, centered on Jesus. And I would love to say that, that that's, that's easy. It's not. Um, there's so many times, again, I wake up consumed with what if, what if, what if, what if. And, you know, it, some of us, and we'll talk more about this kind of in how we handle stress, how we handle difficulties in another time. But, you know, I, I am more of an self isolating person when it comes to handling stress. I, I like to kind of figure it all out first before I, that's the way I process. And so self isolation may not be an issue for me because that's that's my natural kind of bend, <laughs> you know, and then I try to work through the problems and <clears throat> that's can be good, but it's it's not good because I, I need Joyce. I need others to help process, but I, I need I need to make sure I'm focusing where I need to focus and it's I'm centered on Jesus. And so this is is it's a it's being having a foundation. Mm -hmm in our marriage. And uh, let's keep reading in, in chapter three, verse 12. It says again, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you and over all of these virtues put on love, which binds them together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. And he goes on and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. And then with gratitude in your hearts to God and whatever you do, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks. And you know what? what happens and what things get frayed in crisis our compassion <laughs> who who do we think about we 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 think about ourselves we we are we are hurting and 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 we are and, and so we fail to empathize and fail to be moved by even those closest to us. And we think I am hurting more than the other. And so our compassion gets frayed. Um, my problems are bigger than your problems. Our kindness gets challenged and we get grumpy. We get irritable and uh, you know, out of sorts yeah grumpy pants and sometimes we're not we're not nice to be around and uh that that just it just happens and again that's that full length mirror sometimes that's that that we're with with each other our our kind our humility um we're not focused where we need to be our gentleness we get on edge i don't know if you've ever if you ever had a cut a bruise a hurt a burn we get, we, we're sensitive because we're hurting. And, and so it, it, we have some raw emotion, our patience, we get, we get kind of tightly wound up. Mm -hmm. And uh, God wants us to, to clothe ourselves with these things. And, and so some important things that we need to understand. Do you have any thoughts? Just as you think. Um, it talks about us bearing and holding up and this idea of it's, it's a process of helping, making sure we're finishing strong, that we don't kind of bail out. Mm. Um, you know, the other day as I was processing thoughts, you know, again, about our immigration, will we ever get back? What, what will happen? What if, and, and Joyce just had to say, you know, Sean, you just, You've got to be at peace. That's a, that's an example of, of bearing. She, I, I was, if I can use the word, I was getting frayed. I was, I was, I was collapsing a little bit, allowing my mind to go down places. And, and then I needed her support, her to bear with me, to help me stay strong, to stay 
to stay standing. And that's what our marriage is meant to be. We're meant to be that support for one another. And there are times, and you probably have experienced it, where one of you may be strong, one of you may be weak, and that's a time to bear with one another. None of us, none of us are strong all of the time. And we need each other. And uh, marriage is meant to be that support. And forgiveness, you know, one of the... Th I think Tony talked about it uh, months ago before we got here, but grace, grace is transformational. Um, and when we understand and properly understand grace as Christians, I think, I, I think, I, I know it, it causes us to live differently. <clears throat> it shapes us. When we understand what God has given us, we live differently. Clean slates. We want that of ourselves from God to, we, we enjoy that, ref that refreshing to realize that we can start each day with our sin blotted out, forgiven, not, not even seen by God. Now imagine if we could experience that same thing in our marriages, to begin fresh, mm -hmm. to begin anew, wiped clean, blotted out, canceled. I mean, that's powerful. Um, get fresh starts. If you're a golfer, you get mulligans, do-overs, whatever it is. And God expects me to have the same mentality as he has. He forgives us. And, uh, you know, love. To put on love. It's, it's like a clothing. When he talks about clothing ourselves, I mean, I, people are joking right now on Zoom meetings or, or, or as they're having meetings over the internet that people are wearing their sweats and their comfortable clothes and, you know, they're, they're, they're in their pajamas all day and, and I, maybe some of you are, I don't know, but uh, that's why we're only kind of face to face. And, uh, but uh, but that's, what, that's what's comfortable to us. And this idea of clothing, it, it means that we, 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 we kind of clothe ourselves. We're, we're into this point where it's, it's comfortable. It, we're using it so much, like an old shirt um, that we just, we love to wear. And that's what God wants us to have. He wants us to put on, to clothe ourselves with love, compassion, kindness, etc. We need to sink into the garment. And we need God's help to do it. And how, how will we do that? Goodness, we've got we've to let the word of God dwell in us richly. Again, all of you know this. These are not new thoughts, new, new concepts as Christians. But I need to be reminded during this time of some foundations in my marriage to allow things to dwell in us richly. You know, to... To dwell in us richly means that it overflows. I remember as kind of learning to preach and learning to give lessons, someone shared, you need to preach or teach from the overflow. And what that means is you have put so much study, you've put so much prayer and, and energy into your lesson or what you're trying to do that you you preach from it's it's spilling over you may not even share all of the things that you've learned but you're preaching from that overflow versus you put in a little bit of study a little bit of effort and and then you're kind of just using that god wants us to be overflow it wants us to be abundant coming from our lives and and uh you know Joyce will share some kind of analogies here from. Okay. <clears throat> uh, when we were talking about this, I, I had a couple visual things in my mind. Um, I was thinking, okay, if we made a trip to Niagara Falls, um, you know, we would expect to see this abundance of water, you know, just flowing over. And, um, you know, if we went and there was this little trickle, um, we would be incredibly disappointed. Um, and, uh, you know, it would barely make it to the edge. And that's this idea that the word is dwelling so richly, it's always overflowing. Or I thought of the example of, um, you know, you pay $50 to go to an all-you-can-eat buffet. 
Sounds good to me, especially a seafood one. Um, you know, and you're excited to see all the abundance of uh, choices that I'm going to get for my dinner. And um, imagine when you show up and they have one vegetable, one bread, one drink of water, half a serving of meat and no dessert. Um, you know, just think, I would be demanding my money back. First of all, I'd be incredibly livid inside and um, disappointed, but we'd want our money back. But I think of that, you know, when Sean was talking about the, the overflow of how rich that would look like, um, you know, that you would go to an unending banquet. Um, and, and that's what God's word is, not that we just get to select it, but that it actually overflows from our heart. Um, you know, it's letting the word um, be living in my mind and that it, it, it guides my life and especially um, our marriage and at this time. Um, you know, it, it, it guides me as to what clothing or what garment do I need to put on or what do I need to add um, right now. And, you know, even in light of, um, you know, taking off, and I know the, the women um, yesterday, we were listening and, and hearing about some of the things, and, and it made me think of, um, I know in our marriages, sometimes, yes, we do need to stop and, and not speak the things that we normally would speak, but it doesn't end there. We also have to put on. There's a grace, um, there's a patience, there's a humility, the things that Paul was talking about. So it's not just shutting up or not rolling our eyes anymore or not making a snarky comment, but um, you know, if the word is richly dwelling, then the spirit is there prompting me um, of ways to um, you know, converse and respond. And I think this is a really, really great season as we're all kind of tightly wound up in our home to work on this, you know, our cord in our marriage. And, um, and I thought, you know, we could ask each other, um, you know, honey, whatever you call your mate, um, you know, what, what do you think I should put on? Like, what is something that would encourage our communication or, or build you up? Um, what is something you know, that you feel what spiritual garment, um, the other stuff about what you want to wear and take off, that's for another conversation. But you can ask your spouse, what would you like me to um, put on? Is, is it patience? Is it peace? Is it grace? Um, so anyway, out of the overflow of the, of the word dwelling, I think this is a place that we can go in our communication with each other. You know, I think one of the more difficult things in my life to do it, when I'm consumed with life or things that uh, are very emotional is to is to make sure that I'm I'm thankful and I'm filled with gratitude. Uh, this idea of thankful literally means grace full, so full of grace. That's where we get the word Eucharist. We, you know, the communion is the Eucharist. It's, it's being thankful for the, the body and blood and sacrifice of Jesus. We are filled with his grace. And, and I'm focused on what God has given me versus what God has not. And that's important mm -hmm. because during these times, quite frankly, I know my own prayers can be very much, God, please do this please do this, please do this, please work in this situation. And, and those, are, those are great prayers and necessary prayers. God wants us to pour out our hearts to him as children. But we also need to realize, okay, God has given me a lot. And quite frankly, I've had to remind myself, okay, let's say I never go back to Pittsburgh and never go back to my home and I, I'm here and that's, that's fine. I've got eternity. I've got Joyce. I, I've, I've got life. I've got enough. And ultimately I have heaven and I have a lot to be grateful for. And so I need to be filled with gratitude, filled with grace 
And this idea of grace now causes gratitude causes me and it means to lean forward. You know, uh, many people when they're singing songs will, will lift their hands. That's, that's what it means. I'm filled with so much gratitude. I lean forward to God. I'm grateful to God to what he has given. We, we, we need this and we need this for one another. And uh, I'm going to share something more. Mm. Um, yeah, I was just going to share as an example of, you know, just our expressions with one another of gratitude and thankfulness. Um, last Friday was my birthday and um, Sean, I, I don't know where he did it and when, but we share a Facebook page together. And um, as I was sitting in the morning, um, you know, once I had gone on Facebook, I saw the post and of course I got all teary eyed, but he had just expressed some, you know, a lot of thankfulness um, for me and our marriage and a happy birthday uh, sort of thing. What I thought was comical is a few people thought it was me writing happy birthday to Sean <laughs> because it was so expressive. I think they just assumed it was me. So I was very nice and flowery. Yes. <laughs> Um, but it was just, it's, I think it's, that's what Sean's talking about is that, you know, we don't need a birthday either, um, to have to True. express exactly. our gratitude and our thankfulness. And, and there's lots of little ways to do it. And while we're doing it with each other, honestly, we're, you know, if we have kids in our home, we're also, um, you know, being a great example of training and teaching them how to express thankfulness and gratitude. Yeah. And I just, I just want to reiterate again, it's, it is we need to be practice this more and more. And uh, again, I'm convicted about it, you know, birthdays or whatever. We, we need to be more expressive of our gratitude towards another one another. I think lastly, as we kind of wrap up just some, some practicals. Um, I don't know what routines we have right now, if, if we even do, <laughs> um, you know, but it's, that's one of the challenges. I think, <laughs> The first week of this whole quarantined or kind of self self isolation, we may have gone, Ooh, wow, this is cool. I kind of, this is a vacation. I get some extra time and, and, uh, but you know, it's now we, we get thrown out of routines and we need to, uh, we need to establish some routines again, even for one another making sure we're protecting when they're, they're getting some time with God. They're getting, we're getting time with each other. Um, you know, do something special, at least do something special in the week. I don't know if you, if you used to go on dates, um, continue <laughs> to go on dates. I don't know what's going on with the chat on. Oh, okay. Oh yeah. We're not, uh, I don't have the chat on. I saw Sorry. people. No, go ahead. Finish. Okay. <laughs> I'm still learning this whole Zoom thing, so uh, <laughs> um, we're going to wrap up. Um, read a spiritual book together. Uh, pray together. Read some psalms. Read the scriptures together. Practice gratitude. And remember that, uh, you know, we're, we're a cord of three strands. We've got each other, and uh, we've got God. So just a few challenges. Like Joyce said, choose a, choose a, a trait to clothe yourself with this week. Um, compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, love. How will, you, how will you clothe yourself? Write an expression, a note of gratitude, of thankfulness to your spouse. Check. <laughs> and do something special this week, a date, something memorable. Um, go for a drive. Make uh, well, I don't know what... I don't want to violate conditions that are being <laughs> put out there, but, <laughs> you know, practicing what we're, what we're supposed to, but uh, just again, just uh, do some things that are special and we have some opportunities. And next week we're going to talk about kind of resolving conflict. Um, and uh, I'm sure none of us have had any issues over the last few weeks and we're all, you know, it's, <laughs> We're just loving life and, uh, you know, Peachy <laughs> we're not sensitive or we're not, uh, <laughs> we're overflowing with it, <laughs> you know, but I think at times like this, things can accumulate. So it, it's, it's a great way to, how do we resolve? How do we reconcile things that get in our marriage? So looking forward to that. Uh, again, we're going to adapt and, uh, 
kind of figure this out. So make it perhaps more interactive, ask some discussion questions and we'll, uh, but thank you for tuning in.